What's going on? My day-to-day -day people. Got my people with me, huh? Got my people with me. Once again, all praises to the Most High, through His Son, our Lord, King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Look, let's take one moment uh, to consider the fact of a lot of things out there to pray for, man. Let's pray for those that's um, in foster care. This may be, you know, hard to transition into a home. Those that have mental health, um, you know, the kids that's in St. Jude's Hospital, you know, the kids that's born with, uh, you know, defects and, and, you know, just things that we probably don't consider on a day-to-day -day basis. But let's try to implement a thought process of different things to pray for and What's on my heart now, as I as I say this, is definitely the the mental health aspect, you know, and the and the children, uh, like the children that's in St. Jude's, you know, the kids that's born with cancer. Let's just pray for these people. All right, let's let's pray for them. Now, the mental health aspect of what's going on, and um, you know, a lot of people are they're losing it, and. We have to be strong. We have to set an example from the example that was set before us, and that's through Christ. That's how Christ taught us. And, you know, peace, joy, you know, just good things that come within the fruit of the Spirit. That's Galatians 5.22. Now, with that joy, it doesn't mean that you're joyful all the time. It's just the joy and the, the hopeness of knowing that Christ will come back, and he will free and deliver the sin, the the sickness, like it, it, it will not be any more of this. But while we're still here, the miracles can be performed through prayer. All right. And anybody who has gifts of healing, just never, ever doubt the power, the power that comes from heaven. So once again, let's please, you know, pray for these type of things that's going on out there. Now, um, we're going to go through. Ezekiel 14, the whole chapter, Ezekiel 14, continuance of the Kingdom Derby. And I hope that everybody's doing good and everybody has or had a blessed day slash night, whichever time you uh, view this. But um, let's get to it. So this is Ezekiel chapter 14. All right. So um, like I said, the four horsemen, the four spirits. They're all in chapters. They're all through scripture, not just in um, Revelation. All right, so Ezekiel chapter 14. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of it all by them? Therefore, speaking to them and saying to them, thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that set up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols." Man, <laughs> the Lord don't play. Five, that I may take the house of the Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. And that's that's true. We go astray. We become estranged through idols. Okay, so their idols back then might have been wood and stone. And I'm pretty sure still today it's probably wood and stone. Majority of it is the telephone. All right. A telephone can become an idol. PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox can become an idol. Different things, whatever you put all of your, your heart and your desire into, um, that's, that's an idol. Okay? Six. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away from faces from all your abominations. 
for every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separates himself from me and setteth up his idol in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. Eight. Hey. And I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So when he makes you a sign and a proverb, it's right there in writing. It's a sign that, okay, he must have did something to the Lord, right? A proverb is going to be a name or a byword that comes behind it. Like, for example, heathen, all right? Um, nine. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I will stretch out my hand upon him and I will destroy him from the midst of the people of Israel. Wait a minute. Does the Bible say what did the Lord? Let's see. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Whoa. So the Lord deceives people. See, this is where that spiritual interpretation and reading comes. Everything that the Lord does is righteous. He's not unrighteous in anything that he does. Okay. So, if you see this and you're like, wait a minute, the Lord deceives? Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 1 and see what this context of deception is. This is Romans chapter 1. Let's look at, let's start, let's start, let's start, let's start. Let's start right here in 19. Because that which be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it into, into them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their own imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, now, listen to this, 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. All right? Now, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now, here we go right here. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. All right. So the key thing to reading the Lord deceiving someone is right here. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That's the deception. It's not anything like to the term deception. He gave them up to their own mind, to another mind. Okay? So really they deceived themselves. 
If you understand that, we cannot place God in in any type of category where he just seems like he condones these things. Like we can't do that. We can't do that. We have to understand this scripture and understand what it's saying. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. All right. So from here, let's go back to Ezekiel. And I really do hope that makes sense. We're going to go back to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ten, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. Twelve, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and I will break the staff of the bread thereof, and I will send famine upon it, and I will cut off man and beast from it. There we go with breaking the staff of the bread, the famine. All right. 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Now, wait a minute. We're like, okay, you got Noah, Daniel, Job. They're going to deliver their own souls by their righteousness. That's what we do. That's what we do. Yes, you're supposed to be a fisherman of men, fisher of men. But at the end of the day, when we pass, when we go to sleep, all right, we are held account of our own actions, of our own words, of our own doings, okay? We can't say, oh, well, Johnny told me to do this, or I helped Johnny do that, or I told Johnny to do this. No, it's on you. It's on me. We, we hold our own self accountable on the day of judgment, all right? So when righteousness is declared, it's not from the people who you uh, deliver messages to or, or, or help or, or encourage. It, it, it's on you. Okay? And I, I really hope that makes sense. We are on our own account. Okay? We're not going to step up to the plate and speak on Judgment Day and speak on the behalf of somebody else. We're going to speak on the behalf of our own selves. All right. So... Fifteen, if I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast. All right. So here we go with this beast thing again. Let's go to let's go to uh, second Peter. Let's go to second Peter. Chapter two. I have to remember that in Ezekiel. Second Peter chapter two. Let's start at nine. Second Peter chapter two, verse nine. We're going to go to twelve. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. 11. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. 13. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. 14. Having eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart that have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Well, I tell you what, man, 15, which have forsaken the right way 
and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Now still the wicked, the still wicked can be delivered. And that's through repentance. That's through acknowledging of the sin of the wrongdoings. We can't just condemn, uh, condemn people. All right. We can't because what we may fire, the people we may fire, the Lord hires. What we and the people, we may give up on, uh, test our patience, just lose patience. Normally, the people we fire, the Lord hires. All right, so from here, let's go to Daniel. We're going to do the Daniel chapter 4. And I know I read too many <laughs> verses in there, but it, I mean, I, scripture is so good. All right, um, Daniel chapter 4. This is uh, about Nebuchadnezzar's dream, okay? So he had a dream that he seen this glorious tree, and then it got chopped down. And that came from pride, all right? That came from not being humble. That can happen to us. If we get too prideful when it's walking, arrogant, right? We're going to have to go and learn a lesson, right? So we can't be prideful. Can't be arrogant. Can't act like, can't act like you know everything. You just have to remain low. You have to remain low. All right, so Daniel, um, chapter 4. Let's go to verse 11. We'll start at verse 11. The tree grew. And was strong, and the height thereof reached into heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. 13. And I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit, lest the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. 15. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. 16. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. So we see somebody being broke down. Now, the reason why the stump was left there is because there's room for growth. Okay, so if you go into the woods and you see a tree stump, you can still plant something inside of that tree. All right, so the Most High seen something in Nebuchadnezzar's heart where repentance could be found and actually be genuine. So he left the tree, right, with the fruit, okay, left the tree as a stump. So he's chopping them down. He's chopping them down. He's prideful, cutting them down, leaving a stump. You still have room to grow. Once again, the people we fire, the Lord hires. All right, so let's go back to Ezekiel. I hope this is making sense. And I really try not to make these things so long, man. Now I understand why in churches the pastor would always say one more, uh, one more, one more sermon, one more verse, and then it lasts like two more hours after that. I totally get it, man. If you're in a church like that, then that's definitely the spirit flowing because the man cannot keep his mouth shut. And all praises for that. All praises for that. There's no need to, to keep your mouth shut if you got knowledge. Uh, if the Lord has blessed you with knowledge, there's no need to sit there, be closed, closed mouth, man. Share it. All right? Share it. There's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that can click with you, and you'll be amazed at how that process goes. All right, so let's go back to Ezekiel. 14. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Where we at? All right, so 16. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. You see that? Only be delivered yourself. 
All right? And if we remember how Job was, Job went through it with his family. All right? His family was celebrating birthdays, and he was praying for them. And we know how Job, the story of Job goes. We know how that goes. <clears throat> Excuse me. 19. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughters. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and you shall see their way and their doings, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when you shall see their ways and their doings, and you shall know that I have not done without cause, I that I have done it, saith the Lord." And that's what happens with the remnant, with the leftover people that do not catch any of these punishments. They have a story to tell, right? They have a story to tell because they witnessed it. Just like the children from the Exodus in Egypt. They had a story to tell watching the older generation get wiped out from being rebellious. They had a story to tell. So anytime this happens... To a multitude of sins amongst a multitude of death or pestilence or famine, a remnant will have a story to tell. And that story to tell is how God showed his face. Right? See, it's sad that something sad and dramatic and, and just Things like this that we read would have to happen in order for somebody to see that God is real. Blessed are those, man, that, that believe in Jesus Christ. All right? Blessed are those that believe in Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that our life is cookies and cream. And that, uh, that doesn't mean that. But the one main proprietor that we have in this walk is faith understanding, hope, joy. And then we can go right back to Galatians 5.22 of what consists of um, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, much love, peace.